we interrupt your regularly scheduled moment of silence to bring you the news. Paris, Cairo, Gotham, Cardassia Prime, Legopolis, Jakku, Golgofringum, Zark. News from around the cosmos, podcasted secretly from 20,000 leagues below Skynet headquarters. This is The Nautilus at Nine with Marcus Nemo. Well, good morning. I'm Marcus Nemo for The Nautilus at Nine, bringing you tomorrow's news cycle recycled today. Whether you're listening to this in your newly fashioned helmet to help drown out the memory of the younglings you've just murdered, or perhaps you need a gentle voice to help you unwind after performing your duties as a handmaid, now's a good time to fix yourself a stiff drink. Listen to the news from a multitude of different dimensions that are hopefully worse off than the one you're occupying right now. I'm currently enjoying one of my favorite on-air cocktails. I call it a Mai Tai Fighter. It combines a frightening and deadly amount of rum, curacao, lime juice, served in a tiki-themed ball-shaped mug that should be picked up by both hands, palms flat against the mug, and drank fast, because this little cocktail is a short-range fighter that really moves. Ah, I have you now. Well, our top story tonight, International Genetics Technologies, or InGen, is making headline news this week as one of their cargo planes was caught in Hurricane Dante yesterday and had to make an emergency crash landing in the middle of the nature preserve on Illa Sorna near Costa Rica. The cargo InGen was transporting was apparently the last known mugwai in existence, and today remote access camera footage has shown the mugwai is alive and in no way under threat of expiration. Predictions on how many new mugwai could be roaming Illa Sorna because of last night's tropical storm are now in the millions. The threat of the invasive mugwai population to the health of the InGen dinosaurs that have been left to live out their lives there are already at critical levels. It seems for the second time in Earth's history, dinosaurs are about to go extinct. Of course, the real threat now is how many mugwai have found food sources and begun midnight feedings. Chaos theorist Dr. Ian Malcolm was approached by reporters and had this to say. Uh, uh, hi, uh, everyone. Uh, look, uh, InGen, uh, the Dinosaur uh, Welfare Institute, the Mogwai uh, Wildlife Foundation, uh, they're all, all trying to uh, negotiate, uh, trying to put together a plan uh, for this uh, Mogwai uh, call. Uh, before, before you have... Uh, a potential uh, gremlins uh, park uh, on your hands. Uh, that uh, ha, uh, is not uh, good. Well, apparently the UN has already stated that if the Mugwai call doesn't happen immediately, the elite special forces soldier, Major Alan Dutch Schaefer, will be called out of retirement to lead a gremlins eradication team because of his first-hand experience with alien predators. In other news, a couple of star-crossed lovers tied the knot today in one of the biggest same-sex marriages in the cosmos. Flash Gordon and Captain Buck Rogers formally declared their union to one another in one of the splashiest wedding celebrations in the 24th century. The ceremony itself took place in the center of the universe on the beautiful planet of Eternia, within the grand and ancient halls of Castle Greyskull. This fabulous location was a pre-wedding present from Prince Adam of Eternia and his life partner, Man-at-Arms. Overseeing the wedding nuptials was Justice of the Peace, Albus Dumbledore, who pronounced the handsome adventurers partners for life in front of a cheering crowd of family and friends. Other celebrities at the wedding included She-Ra, the Princess of Power, and her loving spouse, Xena, the warrior princess, as well as John Carter of Mars and his life partner, Snake Plissken of Earth. We'll move over pod racing. It seems temporal drifting is pulled out in front as the new extreme sport to be trending across time and space this weekend. It's no surprise the most popular time sliders competing are the foam box derby drifters. Bill S. Preston Esquire and Ted Theodore Logan, former members of the rock group Wild Stallion, have been ripping up the circuits of time in their 1960s aluminum payphone with bifold doors and steel floor in order to try and dethrone the foam box derby drift king, the time lord of Gallifrey. Hardcore fans of the Doctor of Drift and his classic 1929 woodcrafted call box in cool Pantone blue have been anxious to hear the results of the race. But because the two phone boxes have been in a constant state of sliding in and out of different time periods for an extended period of time, when will the winners be declared? Only time will tell. (laughs) Oh, and there's the sound of our Vox Graphonic Vortex, our portable radio porthole to the other side of the elsewhere. Let's tune that in and have a bit of a listen. Listen. 
This is the story of the community cork board to the cosmos. And as most intelligent beings in the universe will tell you, it is a holy remark. Oh, no! No, 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 no. We're not having that boring old voice droning on as the opener. What are you doing? Oh, come on, Jane. We do want people to actually tune in and watch the show. They can't watch the show. It's a podcast. Oh, no. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't do that. No, 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 no. Bloody podcast. Well, you're not the doctor, are you? You're the intern. This is all you can afford. Oh, well, thanks for that, Jane. Hello, I'm the intern. Intern Dimensional, universal healthcare provided to the universe, time aid. And this is my companion, Jane Sarah Jones, the emasculator. Oh, just get on with it. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, where is it? Uh, ah, yes, here it is. Put this on. Oh, now this, this is how you open a show. Coming soon to the Nautilus at nine. Jane! Jane, come have a look at this. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, that's about the size of it. I'll get the hot water. You grab the quantum towel. I'm on it. What is that thing anyway? Omega Notosaurus. Real bitey one, too. Omega what? Omega Notosaurus. It sounds like something you'd catch in a Pokeball. Pokeball? What do you mean, Pokeball? <laughs> no, no, never mind. Better hurry up with that towel, Jane. She's going into labour. About to give birth to the end of the universe. I can't find it! I don't know where your towel is! No, oh, well, doesn't make me much of a hoopy fruit, does it? Hoopy fruit? Are you going to get sued for saying that? Yeah, probably. No plan, Jane! Run! Hurtling through space in his mini hospital in the shape of a white box or boxpital, he is known as Intern Dimensional, the universal healthcare provider to the universe. And it's coming soon to the Nautilus at nine. <laughs> Nautilus at nine? Ugh. That sounds a bit, well, you know, lamey wamey. <sighs> Shut up. Man, we're back, and uh, looks like we're out of time. Well, that's the way we saw tomorrow's new cycle recycled today. I'm Marcus Nemo, reminding you to set your neuralizer for roughly the nine-minute mark so you can erase your memory of everything you just heard. And as always, where dark is the swathe that mows like a harvest. <laughs> Good night. The Nautilus at Nine was created, written, and performed by David Radford and produced by Launchpad Theatre Company with administrative operations direction by Christina Patterson. <laughs> Great title. The voice of Jane Sarah Jones was Christina Patterson as well as this voice you're hearing now. Hello, podcast land. Make sure to subscribe to The Nautilus at Nine and rate and review us on iTunes. To find out more about all things Launchpad, go to launchpadtheater.com or like us on Facebook at Launchpad Theater. Or why not become a Skynet pirate and follow The Nautilus at Nine on Twitter at Nautilus at Nine. And we'll make sure to send you an ahoy matey. Thanks for listening. For dark is the suede that mows like a harvest.